Dietitian Jack Norris just posted this update to veganhealth.org. Vegans should probably be supplementing with zinc. So previously he suggested supplementing for those who have symptoms of deficiency. You're like getting the cracks in the corners of your mouth. What is that called? Angular, not chelation. <laughs> Whatever, you're getting that. You're getting frequent colds. That could be a sign of deficiency, zinc deficiency. But now, as you probably guessed from the title, of his blog post, he thinks that most all, I guess, vegans should supplement for zinc, should probably supplement zinc. He bases this on two recent studies, this one from 2023 and this one from just last month, August 2025. Both of these are available online for free, so if you want to read them, links are in the description. Let's start with the 2023 study, selenium, zinc, and copper status of vegetarians and vegans in comparison to omnivores in the nutritional evaluation study. 172 Germans, mostly female, broken up into four different diet categories, omnivore, flexitarian, vegetarian, and vegan. And there are 40 omnivores, 47 flexitarians, and flexitarian is meat one to two times per week. So it's a reduced meat omnivore diet, 45 vegetarians, and 40 vegans. The participants were put on a diet for one year, one whole year, pretty cool. They stayed within their patterns, so the vegans were still vegan, but they were supposed to follow these, like, typical healthy eating guidelines, right? Like limit saturated fat, which vegans are probably already doing, right? Not too many calories, uh, not a whole lot of added sugar, get your fruits and vegetables, get your fiber. And then the final one here, optimized intake of vitamins, minerals, and trace elements by commercially available foods, considering the seasonal availability of vegetables and fruits. Optimizing intake of vitamins and minerals. So trying to make sure they're getting enough zinc, for instance. Blood was taken at baseline and then at every quarter during the intervention, so three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months. The point was to improve their diets, encourage them to get enough zinc, selenium, and copper were the other two they looked at. Obviously, we're just focusing on zinc. And to see if doing this, if improving their diet influenced their levels. So at baseline, before the intervention, median zinc levels for the vegans were the lowest of all the groups, but the difference was not statistically significant. The differences between any of the groups or among, right? You would say among, between is just two. Anyway, that's the median, you know, looking at all the vegans together. Individually, 42.5% of the vegans were outside of the reference range, had levels lower than the low end of the reference range, which is 600 micrograms per liter. That said, the other groups weren't doing so hot either. 33.3% of vegetarians, 21.3% flexitarians, and 22.5% of omnivores were below 600. And it may be worse than that, depending on who you're listening to. Some, including here in the U.S., the National Institute of Health, they consider 700 micrograms per liter to be the cutoff, and anything under that would be insufficient or deficiency. So in that case, the median of all groups would be out of range, below range. Regardless, clearly the vegans were struggling here to meet their zinc needs, which isn't too surprising when we look at their intake, seven milligrams per day, which actually does meet the Germany requirement for women. It seems to be like seven to 10, so it's right at the, the bottom there. But for here in the US, the RDA for women is eight. And again, for men in both Germany and the US, it's quite a bit higher than seven. The researchers also looked at free zinc in the participants' blood. This is considered by many to be a more reliable marker of zinc deficiency than total zinc. And in this case, the vegans did have statistically significant lower levels. Omnivore, flexitarian, vegetarian, basically all the same. And then there's the vegans. <laughs> But what about the intervention, the one-year intervention? Unfortunately, even after a supposedly optimal diet, optimized zinc diet, whatever, no change for the vegans in terms of zinc. All the other groups, too, there was no change. But, you know, who knows what the vegans were actually eating during this time? They were not in a, a lab <laughs> setting for a year, right? And what does optimized mineral level mean? Are they going by the 7 to 10 
milligrams per day. Well, vegans were already getting seven. So yeah, of course there would be no change. So what is going on? Why are so many vegans seemingly not getting enough zinc, at least by some standards? Phytates or phytic acid. Phytic acid is present in various plant seeds, and while it does offer benefits, it's an antioxidant, it also inhibits absorption of certain minerals like zinc. The more plants you eat, the more phytic acid you get. So not only were the vegans eating significantly less zinc than the omnivores, flexitarians, vegetarians, they were also absorbing less of the zinc they were getting. So this study really just confirms what many dietitians and health organizations have been saying for years, that vegans should probably eat more zinc. The authors of this study say that anyone eating a fully plant-based diet, a vegan diet, or predominantly a vegan diet should get 10 milligrams per day, at least 10 milligrams per day for women, and at least 16 for men. But wait, didn't the researchers find no statistically significant difference when it came to their actual blood levels? Like, wouldn't we see lower levels for the vegans given their lower intake and absorption? Well, the researchers also took urine samples and it turns out vegans have less zinc in their urine, in their pee pee. <laughs> As zinc homeostasis is tightly regulated, it is possible that a lower zinc intake was compensated by decreased excretion and or increased absorption, which provides an explanation for rather stable serum zinc concentrations. And we see this with other nutrients too, like iron, when you've consumed less iron for a longer period of time, right? Not just like a day or a week or something, the body increases absorption. And in the case with zinc, it seems like the body decreases the uh, urinary excretion of zinc. That's one reason why we can't just look at someone's nutrient intake and say, oh, you're deficient, right? I mean, not talking about B12, right? <laughs> B12 is the exception. If you don't eat animal products, you are or will become B12 deficient without supplementation. Don't wait until you're sick, right? Like just take your B12. And if you haven't been taking B12 for a while and you've been eating no or limited animal products, uh, Jack Norris, veganhealth.org, he does have some guidelines on how to start taking more B12, right? Having a, what's the word I'm looking for? Load up period? That's not right. I don't know. It's a period of two weeks or so where you're taking more B12, and then you go down to a maintenance level. Point is, certain nutrients are tightly regulated by the body, so a slightly or even moderately lower intake doesn't necessarily result in deficiency. Oh, someone's mad. <laughs> Still better safe than sorry. Again, the free zinc levels were significantly lower for vegans. Unfortunately, they didn't test those again, like during the intervention, like they did for total zinc. But yeah, zinc deficiency is no joke, right? It weakens the immune system. It makes it harder for our body to fight colds and cancer cells, which brings me to my second study. The second study. I don't know why I said my. <laughs> It's not mine. Zinc supplementation among zinc deficient vegetarians and vegans restores antiviral interferon alpha response by upregulating interferon regulatory factor three. Yep. Totally. This is another German study, this time 65 omnivores, 45 vegetarians, and 18 vegans, no flexitarian group. Again, mostly young women, especially in the vegetarian and vegan groups. I think it was like 80 plus percent. No surprise, most vegetarians, most vegans are women. Just like in the previous study, they tested serum zinc concentrations. And also like the previous study, a lot of vegans were deficient using the 700 microgram per liter cut off. So remember the other study used 600. 67% of vegans were deficient. And then taking into account zinc intake, another 28% were likely going to become deficient or were at risk of becoming deficient. Then for the trial, they gave the zinc deficient vegetarians and vegans 10 milligrams of zinc per day for just 14 days. Unsurprisingly, their zinc levels increased, increased significantly after the two weeks from a mean of 589 micrograms per liter to 740. So they went from deficient to sufficient in 14 days. But they didn't just test zinc in the study, they also tested interferon alpha production. Interferon alpha is basically an antiviral. It helps us fight off colds, inhibits cancer cell growth, and since our bodies need zinc to produce it, 
probably if you don't get enough zinc, you will produce less interferon alpha. So first they took blood samples and exposed them to a virus, right? So this is in vitro and they did find lower levels of interferon alpha for vegetarians and vegans. Also, regardless of diet, they found that those with zinc deficiency or at risk of zinc deficiency produced significantly less interferon alpha in response to the virus. After the two weeks of zinc supplementation, they took blood samples again and found increased production of interferon alpha. So yeah, it really seems like zinc is very important for interferon alpha production. To date, this is the most in-depth research on zinc deficiency among vegetarians and vegans, but we should be cautious when a study merely finds biochemical differences between diet groups. This study implies that many vegetarians and vegans don't have as strong an immune system as meat eaters, but interferon is only one part of the immune system, and research examining infectious disease rates would be the optimal way to determine whether zinc deficiency could be impacting the immune systems of vegans. Interestingly, we do have a couple studies suggesting vegan diets improve immune response, like this one found that vegetarians and vegans were less likely to be infected with COVID. But again, better safe than sorry, especially since these are not the only two studies connecting low zinc levels to veganism. Several others have come to similar conclusions. Many vegans do not meet zinc requirements and or have significantly lower total or free zinc levels than omnivores, especially vegan women. Again, the authors from the 2023 study suggest at least 10 milligrams per day for vegan women, at least 16 for vegan men. I've heard 50% for years that vegans should eat 50% more. So the RDA is eight. So vegan women would wanna aim for 12, men 16.5. That's what I've personally aimed for, 12 milligrams per day, which is very easy to do as long as number one, you eat your beans. Uh, unfortunately, as we've learned, not all vegans do that, apparently. Um, nuts and seeds are also a good source, especially pumpkin seeds, oatmeal, quinoa too. And number two, besides your diet, take a daily zinc supplement. For those who opt to supplement, I recommend about 50 to 100% of the RDA. For vegan adults, the recommended intake is approximately 5 to 10 milligrams per day. I supplement with 15 milligrams per day, 5 milligrams in a multivitamin, and 10 milligrams zinc only supplement. I usually take them at different times, just in case it helps with absorption. I personally take the Deva Multi every other day or so. It has 14 milligrams per tablet, so seven milligrams per day for me. I get like 20 colds a year though, so I'm not sure it's helping. Do be careful though, because zinc does have a tolerable upper limit and it's not super high, it's 40 milligrams per day. And that is both food and supplements. Most tolerable upper limits are just for supplemental intake. This includes food as well. So in my non-professional opinion, and as I have said for like ever now, supplements are very useful. Multivitamins are very useful, especially for those of us eating a restrictive diet which a vegan diet is. Now, if I'd been vegan for like years and I hadn't been supplementing with zinc and I felt fine, I didn't have any symptoms of deficiency, I don't know if I'd be that worried about it. Maybe I would be increasing my risk for colds or even cancer. But then again, that's like not what the evidence we have shows. Very limited evidence, but still, studies certainly don't link veganism to increased risk for cancer. I don't know, it's just not on the same level as like, B12 deficiency or calcium, especially since zinc symptoms are often more obvious and like harder to ignore, right? Like the corner of the mouth thing, you're gonna be like, oh my God, what's happening? <laughs> I need to fix this. <laughs> Whereas osteoporosis, you might not know for a while. To be clear, I'm only talking about adults here. All vegan kids, in my opinion, should be given a zinc supplement in a multi or something. Mine certainly do. They definitely get a zinc supplement every single day. It's incredibly important that kids get enough zinc. So yeah, that's it guys. Let me know what you think. Uh, does this change your approach to zinc for all my fellow vegans or predominantly plant-based eaters out there? Are you not supplementing and now considering it or were you already supplementing for zinc? I would love to know. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. I know you're doing that. I did eat dog food. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that every video now. Subscribe, I ate dog food. Like seriously, give me a like. It was gross. It wasn't that gross, honestly. <laughs>
like it was not that gross. The brie was so much worse. I don't know what that says about me that I would rather eat dog food than vegan cheese. That, hmm. <laughs> or mushrooms. Oh, we have some nasty looking mushrooms in the fridge. I would rather eat a whole bowl of dog food than even a tiny piece of one of those mushrooms. Thank you so much to all of my members here on YouTube and my patrons at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. I do post two exclusive videos a month for tier two members and patrons. I do a vlog and a controversial video. I just posted the controversial for August. I actually posted it on September. Good job, me. And yeah, that's it for me. New video soon. Bye. There are a couple other things from the study I wanted to talk about from the first one. Yes, the first one. So the flexitarian and vegan women had significantly lower body weight compared to the omnivores. Furthermore, the body mass index, BMI, of flexitarians and vegans was significantly lower compared to omnivores. So I think that's really interesting and maybe makes sense in terms of like where are the vegetarians like really it's the flexitarian and vegan not vegetarian and vegan um you know flexitarians i think are i would guess probably doing it more for health right they are limiting animal products for health reasons so maybe they're eating more healthfully overall whereas vegetarians maybe are like loading up on milk, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I just thought that was really interesting. Also, moreover, more vegetarians and vegans had selenium concentrations below the reference range, indicating that these study participants have a higher risk of developing health impairments such as colorectal, liver, or breast cancer due to their low selenium status. So this goes back to that quote I read from Jack Norris about the 2025 study that like we have to be careful making decisions just based on blood differences between groups, right? Like omnivores have more of whatever in their blood and we have less, so we must be less he less healthy, right? You can't and shouldn't do that. I think this is a good example why right? They're saying that, okay, uh, we have lower concentrations of selenium. We might be at risk for colorectal cancer. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure vegans are at a lower risk for colon cancer, but okay, liver, breast, really? Again, that's what Jack Norris was saying. We want to look at rates of disease, right? Not just uh, biomarkers. And finally, Another selenium thing, three vegans had to be excluded from the statistical analysis because they had exceedingly high selenium concentrations and were considered as outliers. So I'm wondering, like Brazil nuts, are they eating like 10 Brazil nuts a day? I don't know. I'm so curious. I bet you it's Brazil nuts, especially if you're living in Germany, right, which has selenium soil issues. Maybe they're like, oh man, I got to eat my Brazil nuts to make sure I'm getting enough selenium. It's like, yeah, but you only need like one. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> it's already Halloween time, right? Like September 4th? Sure. It's also Hollow Night Day. Hollow Night Day. <laughs> Silk Song release. I'm sure the majority of you could not care less, but I am very, very excited. I had it downloaded this morning, 7 a.m. Actually, it wasn't on the Nintendo Switch eShop at first, and I kept like closing it going back in. Finally, it showed up. I go to it and it gives me this error code that's like, it's not available in your region, basically. It's like, dude, it's like 7.05. Come on. So I kept closing it, opening it, trying again. Finally, by like 7.10, I think I could buy it and download it. And I cannot believe it's $20. So basically the same price as the original, if you take into account inflation, like what? They easily could have charged 40 or more. Wow. So cool. So excited. I don't get to play it first. <laughs> I haven't played it yet. I've been working. Uh, very tempting though. My uh, eight-year-old is going to play it when they get home from school and then I'll play it tonight. So I'm, they're really excited too. They love that game and they love bugs. I don't know. I can't wait to see them like play it and be excited and see the new things together. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so fun. Okay. I gotta record this. <laughs>